My name is Darren Hupke, and this is Pixels and Polygons. Welcome to another episode of Pixels and Polygons. I am Darren Hupke. I introduce myself again. Um, that's going to be a problem because I said that at the top. Oh, well. Uh, to make matters worse, I didn't actually give my guests a chance to introduce themselves. So um, on this episode, I do have uh, Brian from RetroGameBooks.com coming back onto the show uh, as my first guest. Um, he has obviously uh, been... Uh, awesome to have on the show and, and chat with. Uh, but definitely, if you want to listen to one of the previous episodes, he plugged his social media tags. Um, but the biggest thing is just to check out retrogamebooks.com. That is the site that he runs, that is um, the source of all of his original books, um, as well as uh, books like mine. He carries 32 bit library, uh, volumes one through three are all available on his website. It is my preferred place for you to buy my books. Um, as Brian sends out some cool extras, I hooked him up with some stickers and. Um, bookmarks and trading cards, um, things that he's uh, done for his own books anyway, and I, I was inspired by. So it's uh, just fun to get some extras when you when you get that. You can't get it from Amazon that way. Um, I mean, you can get the book from Amazon, but it's just the book. You don't get the cool extras that you would get if you ordered it from retrogamebooks.com. So please check that out. Um, and my other guest is my good friend, uh, lifelong friend, Thomas. He is... Um, been streaming on uh, Twitch, and he has a YouTube channel. He shared those links on the last episode he was on as well. Um, he has been a little bit dormant there, but uh, maybe he'll be motivated soon to get back into that, so you could always follow along and check him out. Uh, but I appreciate him coming back to the show. Uh, we've been playing games together for uh, essentially our entire lives, so it's always good to chat with him and uh, kind of pick his brain and have him be a part of this. So that being said, this week we're talking about uh, multiplayer experiences, like and what makes a good multiplayer experience. So um, it was fun to uh, chat with the both of them. Um, it's I recorded these in two separate instances um, on completely separate weeks, uh, but like I'm just so in love with games like Monster Hunter World and Destiny that I mentioned that during like kind of both of my conversations. So kind of edited it around that just to have some fun and make sure it was concise. But I appreciate you listening along, and I appreciate you um, coming back again for the third week. Uh, we plan to do these weekly, and uh, I hope to have these out every Friday. So uh, thanks a lot. Um, enjoy the rest of the episode. What makes a great multiplayer experience for you? Um, yeah, I'd kind of like to know what you uh, what ticks for you, like what, what checks the box for a good multiplayer experience for you. All right, so what makes a great multiplayer experience for me? So first I should say, as a disclaimer up front, I don't play multiplayer games anymore. Uh, this is not because I don't like them. It's actually because I like them too much. Uh, I kind of had to set up a rule for myself where if a game does not have an ending, which is all multiplayer games, I will not play it, or I'll do my best not to play it, um, just because they're so addictive. Uh, I was huge on Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead and those kind of games for so long that I had to um, get out of them. Uh, back in the day, I remember my friends would uh, break their addiction by literally taking their CDs and breaking them and uninstalling the game, and that way they couldn't reinstall it. But uh, we don't have that luxury anymore. You can just reinstall anything off of Steam and you're good to go. So you have to have actual discipline. Okay, so all that out of the way. <laughs> um, what makes for a good multiplayer experience? Um, it's a lot of things, right? Like it's the people you play with. Um, if they're way better than you or worse at the thing, especially competitive stuff, it's kind of not fun. Or if they're learning at a different rate. Um, when it's games like Counter-Strike, um, or, you know, kind of combat based games, uh, balanced maps are extremely important. If it's one sided, you know, like people played like dust two and those kind of maps in counter strike for a reason, they felt fairly balanced and the other maps didn't get a lot of time. Um, for me also, it's like minimum downtime, right? Like you get killed in a game and you got to wait 10 minutes. Uh, I don't know. I can wait a minute. 
Um, you know, the people that are better at the game or maybe more conservative might last longer, but is that even fun? You know, games where you just kind of infinitely respawn, uh, of course, don't even really have downtime. So those are probably better for certain people. Uh, and then the next one would be like, you know, the mechanics, right? Is it actually fun? Um, is it something that has a lot of replay value? You know, multiplayer, usually the replay value comes in the dynamic created from like real people playing together. So the mechanics don't necessarily have to be crazy, intricate, uh, you know, well thought out or deeply thought out. They have to be more balanced and create a framework so that you can have fun with them and kind of invent things around them. Um, and I think I mentioned a little bit, but like, you know, learning curve, it's not just about the other people, it's for myself, right? Like, I don't expect a game to just let me dive in immediately, but I also don't, I'm not really like a League of Legends, I'm going to learn every single character kind of person, because even though I'm not going to play them, I need to know how they play so I can defend against them. That to me is a big investment. And I think that's great for people, but not really for me. Um, the last multiplayer game or one of the last ones I played was actually uh, Factions from uh, The Last of Us. So I was really disappointed to hear that The Last of Us 2 was not going to have a follow-up or it seems like they canned it or they put it on the shelf for now. Um, but for me, it was so fun because it had light crafting, pretty simple crafting, quick action. It was building off of a world I was already familiar with and like really enthralled with. Um and so it put all those things together, plus all the other things I already mentioned, you know, balance maps and like you try to hopefully pair up with people that are, you know, cool. But it was really, really interesting, the strategy you could create in that where you could, you know, down a player and then someone could pick them up if they're on the same team. But you might bait that player on the ground and not kill them off right away because maybe someone will pick them up and you can snipe them. Maybe you'll leave a bomb on top of that down player so <laughs> the next player will jump on it. Maybe they're thinking ahead of you, you know, two moves ahead, and they're actually sneaking up behind you. Um, and all the other crazy things you could do in that game, melee and um, the different modes and everything. Um, super fun. Uh, super sad that they didn't make it. I was planning on breaking my multiplayer, no multiplayer I was rule, ask, if they had made the sequel. Yeah, I was going to ask, is that, mean, is that <laughs> what that means? Is that you would have broken the streak? But um, yeah, okay, it makes sense. I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, think so. I'm kind yeah. of with you. I'm with you and kind of um, all of that, really. Like, it's really about balance. Like, I mean, I think I prefer, like, from a multiplayer experience, I prefer, like, a co-op experience versus a competitive one um, because I think that, like, gates out some of the troublesome spots. Like, um, if there is too much or too heavy of mechanics, like, if it's convoluted, like, maybe you can carry a friend through or, like, learn along and not have the stress of, like, other people, like, you know, harming other people's experience or whatever it may be. Like, the League of Legends example, it's, like there isn't really like the casual player or anything of that. You're, you're, if you're casual, it's because you're just learning how to like play and like, like understand the mechanics, but you're doing so at the, probably the expense of a team who's like very frustrated that you like, like aren't keeping up with them. And so you have to have like, like uh, the proper like balance for entertainment and mechanics and skill and fun. And it's like, it's, it's kind of tough. Um, I have been a fan of some, um, like Fall Guys. I got caught up, you know, like having some fun with that because it was simple and like you can, like the, the fun in that was being thrown into an odd like mini game experience that you were kind of like learning on the fly, but then like still you can kind of quickly go in and out of. Um, so I really like that, but uh, I like just like a good co-op design and, and the right amount of mechanics like um, to like make it not too overly simplified, but enough to like learn and grow with as you're playing. Uh, for sure. Like that's always been fun. I, I, I mean, I don't like to play with strangers. So I think I, that's why I te tend to avoid like competitive games. Um, so that, or I'm okay with strangers. If there's absolutely no need for social interaction. Like uh, when monster hunter world was out, like I sank hours into that game, but instead of just going out on like a random, like hunter, like level, like just by myself, I would just open it up to like being an open lobby and then just be like queued up with like three random people. And we would have no need to communicate. The game was straightforward. Like we all had this exact same goal. So even if you like, there was no like dialogue whatsoever, like we were able to still like support and play through with each other. And it made it just a little bit easier um, to like play with people in that regard. But um, yeah, I think it's just a, a tough balance to like ha hit that sweet spot. But like when you do mix all those things for me, like um, I can have a good time with games. Um, I'm trying to think of the last competitive game I really got invested in. And I don't know. I mean, I've, I feel like I've, Oh, I guess it would be like Destiny and Destiny 2. Like, I did play a lot of their competitive multiplayer in that because, like, 
they had that weird carrot on a stick design where it's like if you played a little bit you got like weekly rewards so like they wanted you encouraged you weekly to at least play a few matches but i realized that i was playing more than like the necessary amount and i was kind of enjoying it and um that had some pretty good balance to it and everything as well too so um yeah interesting similar similar answers with just the appropriate level of mechanics and balance to balance out the fun yeah i don't have yeah, a hard and oh go ahead Oh, I was just going to say, you just reminded me like the classic co-op experiences. Like I really miss the days of playing games like Zombies Ate My, Na- Ate, Ate My Neighbors and uh, was it Toe Jam and Earl was another really good co-op game. Um, those were just like, you know, you're not thinking about is my is my neighbor good or bad at this game? It's more of like, look, it's only two of us. We're going to figure this out. We'll get through this journey together. But yeah, those are some of my favorites. Yeah, that's cool. Um Right on. Yeah, the uh the what I was going to say the as far as like from a, a multiplayer like standpoint um I don't have the same hard and fast rule of not playing them, but I do like I'm like you I I only want to play like, you know, I want to focus on a kind of a game at a time. Maybe I'll juggle too if they're like entirely different genres and sizes and stuff like that, but in my mind yep. if it is a multiplayer game, like it better be like really good and I can at least have like okay, I'll hit, like, maybe the max level or I'll unlock, like, this highest class or whatever it may be. Like, I'll consider that, like, all right, if I at least do that, I can walk away from it and feel like I've experienced it. But it's been a while since I've really even uh, done that. Like, even with um, recently Street Fighter Six, I just played that for, like, the world tour mode and the single player stuff. And I played a little online just to kind of, like, you know, obviously test myself against other players just to see. Um, but I... I was done with that once I had finished and maxed out like through world tour mode and then the single player content. And I was like, cool. I beat street fighter six. I can put this away. I'm done. I feel good. Uh, see you later. Right. Uh, that's it's fun. like, it's a game that's not real. It's not really an, a game with a real ending, but you got to experience an ending. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks for, for chatting uh, about that, Brian, that'll be uh, um, entertaining to hear some of my other guest thoughts on this i think this is kind of a, a different answer probably from different people so uh thanks for chatting for sure What makes a good a great multiplayer experience for you? Well, it's kind of a cop out, I guess. The the answer is I've played I've played some real trash games and enjoyed them. I've played some really great multiplayer or MMO games and enjoyed them. But it's it's honestly who you bring with you. Um, the whole point of the multiplayer game is to have an experience with someone else, uh, at least for me. So, you know, I've I've gotten into a lot of survival games. And, you know, when you outpace someone in that game, you're not really experiencing the game with them. You're not having that shared experience. And it just isn't as fun. Um, and even in games where you, like, uh, like Sea of Thieves, you don't have an XP bar or whatever. You're not really getting better stats. Like, you still want to experience the world with them. You want to have those pirate fights and things like that with the people you know. Um, when you get to MMOs, I mean, I've never been graded, uh, well, communicating, uh, <laughs> specifically, well, in general, uh, whether that be, just be online, typing to people, or people hearing me when I speak. Uh, yeah, those those communities there also can change if a game is good, bad, indifferent, or great. Um, and from what most people say, I mean, like, the Final Fantasy community is always kind of nice and chill. While I've experienced many times in the WoW community, ooh, they're kind of brutal. They're kind of assholes. Hmm. And, you know, things like that will just drive you away. So for the most part, for a multiplayer game to be good or great, it it's just on who's playing it. It's on who you bring and who you meet. Hmm. I would have kind of agreed to that. I mean... To me, like a, a multiplayer, what well, makes a great multiplayer experience, it like the game itself doesn't have to be great per se. 
if like you know you're playing it with somebody and being able to have a good time with them um the um it's like you know kind of like pizza you know it's like there's never really a bad pizza if it's if it's got multiplayer you know you should be able to at least you know squeak you know some kind of interest out of it or or create a challenge out of it or you know do something fun there um so i mean i think to just to try and give like a specific to the answer like um i do think there has to be like balance um like as far as like not necessarily difficulty or anything but balance for like the mechanics that you have to kind of abide by so like um playing through like a co-op like a like a gears of war you know like if there's a skill gap in players like you the the game builds in the ability like oh you're bleeding out and if your partner can get to you in time you can be resuscitated to kind of continue so you can kind of like have an imbalanced like skill set between players but the game has a, a natural balance that won't allow like somebody kind of be left behind in that scenario um which I think is good. Like you can't always do that, but it's it's kind of a good way to like enjoy a game. Or just throw in that blue shell and really uh, neutralize that first uh, person in Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's a good example of the imbalance of that. Like Mario Kart, like it's designed and people put up with it, and they have for you know number of entries. But like, why like jet out of the start? like get the right timing to get that extra boost off the line, like nail first place and just hold it for two and a half laps with just pure skill of just blowing away people around you. And then suddenly it just takes that, you know, that's when they're going to give you, the game's going to give the blue shell to take out the first place player and, you know, like flip the table on the entire game and skill. Like it's, that is like the opposite of like a balance within the game to create a good experience. They do have the like sound boost thing or whatever. It can knock the blue shell out of the sky. Yeah. So if you're in first place, it is kind of like counterbalanced to be like, well, I need to hold this instead of, say, trying to get a mushroom. Like, they already limit the good items you can get when you're in first place. Yeah. I felt like that was good enough. But throwing the blue shell, I think it's because it's mostly supposed to be a party game and not a racing game. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean,. Yeah, but I when the blue shell was yeah. first created, they didn't have that that horn thing. I mean, that is a, a current thing you can do now in Mario Kart Eight or Infinite or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. But uh, yes, that so that absolutely is something that helps bring that balance back. So like, you can kick ass. Make sure you have a horn on hand. If one's coming to you and you can time it right, boom, you can just deflect it and get rid of it. Um, but yeah, there's like the. Um, I know, I think Mario Wonder does it like this, but I know like this new Super Mario Brothers, like Wii and, and those games, like you would, the player would turn into a bubble, you know, and like, you know, as long as yep. you kind of like stuck to your challenge, if you got near them when you could, you can bring them back out and allow them to come back. And that like, again, that lets different sets of skilled, like skill levels of players still kind of play together and enjoy a game and everything. So it's when the game like understands like its own mechanics that gives a balance between skill levels like that. Th- I think that's to me, like when it, you can make a really great multiplayer experience for sure. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting talking about multiplayer games in general, because it, yeah, it depends on what the scope of the game is or what it's aiming to do. It's like, you know, you're, you're talking about the balance of the game and then, you know, gears of war, little shooter, um, Mario and all that. They're really confined games. When you get to, even on the MMO side, you need to have balance in classes. Otherwise, uh, I remember Final Fantasy XI, uh, you had to be specific classes. Otherwise, people wouldn't pick you for parties. Like Otherwise, the game can just not be fun. Like Even if it has a decent community, they're just like, well, you're not going to out-damage this other person just due to your class, what, you're, what you chose to play, what you're doing. So balance in general, yeah, that's... Yeah, th- yeah that, that's very important. Yeah, th- that becomes unforgiving in those states where it's like your skill does matter. It's not like oh, I've got five others. Like they'll make up for it. Like if you're fighting like a boss or doing like some you know high level like content, like you kind of have to pull your weight and know what you need to do, or else you know you ruin that multiplayer experience for everyone with you. Um, I, and the other Man, thing, I guess. He, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say now you mentioned high end content. I know a lot of the best multiplayer experiences I had have always been with a difficult boss encounter or something that was just a little bit challenging. Yeah. So even if it's multiplayer, it, it still should have 
something that's going to keep a, I'm not going to say a hardcore player anymore, but a skilled player, what have you, trying to stress themselves to achieve this. And it doesn't even have to be a core game. It could be ex- additional content, but having that really hard thing, because it's that sense of achievement of doing it together, that just, ah, oh, it's, it's so sweet, so good. Yeah. I have a, <clears throat> I have two games that, like, if anybody, well, no, I, I guess I shouldn't say two, because the number fluctuates. But Monster Hunter is a game that if somebody said, like, you know what, I think I want to get back into this, or I, w- I think I want to try this, I would instantly download it and be like, okay, cool, I'm on board. Like, you know, <laughs> three, my three, 326 hours, you know, isn't even that high compared to what other people have on other games, you know, but I will 100% dive back in and play that. Um, it's the same thing for Destiny. If somebody said, like, you know, I want to play that new Destiny campaign, I would be like, yes, please, thank you so much, like, let me do it. Uh, I would jump right in and do that. Because that game, I am now stuck at a point with, with my love and like association with Destiny is I, I want to only experience it in multiplayer. So like some of the campaign levels that have come out and some of the expansions over the years, like I've opted out of um, like experiencing them all the way because I was like waiting on other people to play through them with and stuff. And so as my friend group who was playing it and sticking to it, um, like dwindled and then eventually became nothing. Like I no longer was playing that. I'd pop in and play like the Crucible, like PVP stuff that I can do solo because like, I'm going to jump in and get squatted up with you know uh, the whole party. Like uh, and I know I won't necessarily make or break it, but I think I'm confident enough in my skill that like I won't hurt or drag somebody down. I know I'm only going to contribute and still have a good time doing it. Um, so I, I would only do like those things and not the single player content, which. I really want to try that stuff again, but at this point, I think everyone's, uh, they either are going to be playing it or they will never return to it because it is so far gone. So didn't they, they had a new expansion just last year, right? Yeah, they've done um, seasonal contents and things, and then like a major update once a year, essentially. And they have a the final phase or the final light. I don't know, they have something big that is teased to be like, you know, like a, a good kind of swan song ending for like the Destiny 2 chapter and potentially like create the breadcrumbs into whatever is going to be next, which obviously if they do a Destiny 3, like I'll be, I, I hope that just kind of like, you know, gets people to be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot. It's new again, or it's, this is a new thing. But, you know, in reality, it's probably going to just build off the, the established bones of it all. But uh, whatever, yeah, I'd be on board. I, I remember playing Destiny 2. I kind of when it first launched, and I was a little upset because Destiny One didn't last all that long in my mind. I'm like Destiny Two, like Destiny One just came out like four years ago, but it needed it needed uh, needed the upgrade. Uh, but I went back to it recently uh, when I heard that new expansion was coming out. But I didn't realize just how many seasonal contents there were, and just how many story arcs there were. So starting to play, I was like, this is this is too much of an investment. I can't be doing this. I don't know what I was thinking because they said it was free, but no, no, no. You, you get like just a taste, and then you got to pay for the rest of it. Yeah, that they have With, like uh, open and gated like some of the stuff so that new players aren't like having to buy absolutely everything. It's like if it's like a couple like phases old, they're like allowing players to have that content for free. It's an interesting model. Like I think they've been trying to do a lot of things from like a release standpoint. Um, to like ensure that they can grow a player base, but also not just like, Hey, everyone who has paid for this, like, why are we just giving it away? What's the value in them having it? So, um, it's a weird balance there. They're having to strike, but I I hope that, you know, obviously it's successful enough that it should most definitely continue into a destiny three, but, um, I'm hoping they find a way that like gives it like a fresh start, you know, where it brings back in like maybe some lapsed players and as like a, a new starting point, but with like the same, formula of like okay cool you can start together here we'll have single player and multiplayer like abilities for y'all to like experience but um just a a way that kind of i don't want to say resets it because people probably do want to bring over some continuity of it all but you still have to find a way to bring people back or attract new people when you have a game that's been around for you know 10 years and building off all of it yeah but the if they have a new destiny i'll probably play that and then the, uh, oh man, I can't remember the name of it, but it's either late this year, next year, there's another Monster Hunter. I'm going to play that one. Yeah, yeah, I will play that for sure. So right there, there's 
two people ready to go. I'm partying up. It's a four? Actually, no, this is an open world game or something like that. I, I can't remember all the details on it, but if it's, I think the parties were four back then. They may have gotten bigger. I didn't, I didn't play in large groups. Yeah, I played with a lot of, lot of randos, and uh, f- yeah, four-person parties were, were the, yeah. the max count. Um, but rad. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, we probably have a few other questions we can spin out of this and have like follow up episodes on, um, for sure. But multiplayer, a good multiplayer experience. Um, it's interesting to think about, like, you know, I think the next thing maybe we, if we come back together to follow up on this is what personally do we, um, do we want out of like a, if we, if we designed our own or crafted our own, like what would the elements of a good multiplayer game be? Ooh, you're getting crazy with that one. <laughs> um, but right on. All right, Thomas, thanks for, for chatting again. Absolutely. Absolutely.